hey guys, how you doing? It's Henry at Mowers and Blowers. Good morning. 55 degrees right now, may go up to 60. I don't know the way it's going. It's uh, late February already or mid February and uh, just doesn't seem like we're gonna get any more snow. You know what I mean? Um, in the interim, we did get three inches just the other day, but it being 55, it all melted away. I don't have any snow blowers left to fix, and uh, the obscure things like an edger and a uh, front tine tiller, I've already uh, either fixed it or waiting for parts to fix. What would I have left? I've got about 10 push mowers, 10 or 15 push mowers to fix in anticipation of the spring. I want to try to put a dent in it as um, I know that as spring rolls around, people are going to start to whip out their mowers for the season, try to start it. And in most cases, they probably left gas in, in the uh, gas tank and it won't start. Therefore, what do they do? They throw them out. And guess who picks them up? That's right, me. I pick them up for free. So I've got some stuff. Uh, I decided that I wasn't going to take this apart after all because right now it actually covers up some equipment, right? If I took it down, all my equipment would still be exposed, you know? So I've got about uh, three push mowers in here that are already fixed. I've got my Monster Beast that I haven't used all year. I'm going to try to put a dent into some push mowers. I want to thank a whole bunch of guys for buying some of my new stickers. Uh, I've sold about 30 since I uh, first released them. I have about 20 left. So uh, you guys are collecting mowers and blower stickers. You guys know I've, I've had five or six different kinds. Uh, a lot of you have every kind. You know, I appreciate the support of the channel. Keeps the videos going almost every day. Uh, so I'm gonna be thanking you as I uh, figure out which mower I wanna grab first. What comes to mind is easily this one. Why? Well, because if you look at it, it looks kind of fancy, right? It's got a nice big craftsman bag, right? Uh, you can tell that it's probably rear self-propelled. It's got the one lever height adjustment. This thing over here, moving it up and down, will move the height of the rear up and down as well as the front all in one swift motion. It looks pretty fancy. It looks almost like one of those uh, SR4 Toros, you know, but uh, it's not. But the wheels look like they're in great shape. But the only bad thing about it that that makes me look down on it in a way is that it has a Tecumseh engine on it. I don't think I've ever had this model before and uh, I look down on it because of the Tecumseh engine. Now look, Tecumseh makes great snowblower engines, but I think that their lawnmower engines blow. Either way though, this one looks like it's in great shape and it looks like it's one of those semi-expensive ones. So we're gonna whip this one into the garage we're going to see what's wrong with this today. But again, I wanted to thank all the guys that support the channel and continue to buy stickers. Well, thanks to Matthew Derrickson from Brookfield, Missouri, and James Harrison from Waterloo, London, Ontario, Canada. Uh, it's uh, J and H Small Engine Repair. Go check them out on Instagram. Also, Tim Toro from Hamburg, New Jersey. I wonder if uh, Tim Toro is related to Toro of uh, small engine uh, machines. Uh, thank you to Charles Ost of uh, Wantage, New Jersey, who bought four stickers. Ronald Marmostein from Paramus, New Jersey. Ooh, a lot of people from Jersey. Tony Vento from West Ellis, Wisconsin. And Robert Cunningham from Crawfordsville, Indiana. And Dennis Harnanen from Nanuet, New York. All of you guys bought stickers to support the channel or to complete your collections. And uh, I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. So uh, 
after this uh, winter, or it's still in winter, um, I've ran out of gas. So I don't have any gas in the garage, so I won't be able to test this later. Uh, or right now because I know that there's probably no gas in here. Let's check it out. Uh, there's a glistening look to it as if it's there was gas, but then it's dried up during the uh, current winter and the oil looks good. So let me go get some gas at the gas station. Get ready to pay up. You're going to pay up anyway for gas. But with the impending uh, war between Russia and the Ukraine, uh, which I predicted, by the way, uh, gas is just going to be even more expensive. Not to mention the fact that the fear of war also disrupts the uh, people uh, having jitters about the stock market. So the stock market, I've taken a hit big time. So um, I think everybody's feeling the uh, inflation as well as the uh, war jitters, you know. Let's see how much this gas is going to cost me today. You can't put it off when the car tells you low fuel, you gotta go get some fuel, you know? Holy cow, even for a cheap brand, a cheap brand of gas, it's right near my house, so I always get it. 365 for regular. Can you believe that? Regular. So I got uh, $60, it got me, uh, 16 um, gallons, five gallons went to the gas can and the remainder of the 11 went into the tank and uh, it, it filled it up like more than half. It's good enough for now. Uh, I don't really drive this car very much. But anyway, the uh, guy who was pumping gas, he uh, had some type of accent and I says, ooh, is that accent uh, Eastern Europe? Is it Russian? And he's like, oh, you're close, it's Polish. I says, oh, are you worried about the war in uh, Ukraine? He's like, uh, not really. He doesn't think anything's going to happen because, um, well, I mean, you have a war with uh, Russia and the U.S., you know what that means. It means that, you know, we're all dead, you know what I mean, eventually. Uh, somebody's going to go nuclear in a war between the U.S. and Russia, and he just doesn't think that, <laughs> while Putin may be crazy, he's not that crazy, you know what I mean, but... I don't know. I think uh, the war in Ukraine will start uh, February 21st because that's the first day after the end of the uh, Olympics in Beijing. And uh, China and Russia have a uh, cooperation, you know what I mean? They support each other in uh, <laughs> absorbing of property, you know? So Russia will support China in their occupation or take back of Taiwan, while China supports Russia taking back all the former Russian um, countries. But what do I know? I'm just a small engine flipper, you know what I mean? But uh, if it's going to happen, it's not going to happen during the Olympics. It'll happen after the Olympics ends, which is February 21st. So now that we've got some gas, um, it cost me. Uh, we're going to see if this thing starts up. Uh, what's wrong with it, you know what I mean? But just from feeling the... Uh, bail handle it's smooth and it seems to be moving the uh, kill mechanism the uh, rear self propulsion feels good as well no rust no binding it's smooth the uh, recoil starter feels a little weird as if like when you pull it right one inch two inch three inch four inch five inch six inch Move six inches before it grabs. I'm going to spray some uh, multi purpose parts cleaner and degreaser from my friends over at Lucas Oil Products. I'm going to spray it all the way through to the intake manifold. There we go. And should I put this back on? Because usually when you put this back on, right, it isolates the air so that it starts better. I'm just going to put the air filter on real quick. It doesn't look too bad. Let's see if this thing at least turns over. Looks like it might. There we go. Sounds good. So, uh, 
We'll put some gas into the gas tank and see if it runs on its own. But then why would they throw it away if it's nothing wrong with it? Hey guys, how you doing? It's Henry at Mo I did that already. Anyway, so uh, I want to fill this up with gas. But I want to make sure that the glistening look in there of some remnants of some liquid is not water, but gas. You can kind of tell the difference. Uh, water is a lot more soluble and uh, it's distinctive to, you know, the liquid is, is definitely water if you see it. So it looks like it's gas. I'm just going to fill it up a little bit, maybe uh, a third of it or so. Uh, it's more than that. That's about a half. And uh, we just want to see that if this thing runs on its own, you know. Uh, so we'll prime it a bit. Let's take this off and see if any uh, fluid comes out from priming. If it doesn't prime, it means that the carburetor is probably good. It feels like it's kind of priming. And there is... No, there is not. So it doesn't seem like it's priming. Even though it feels, oh, there we go, look. It is actually blowing some stuff uh, through the red straw, which is how it saturates the air filter uh, because it's blocked off on this side. It isolates the air on the inside, and therefore, once you prime it, right, the gas goes and saturates this um, air filter, creating vapors that have nowhere to go but through the intake manifold. So we have gas in it. We know it starts from, from the primer uh, test, and it does prime. So let's see. So it ran for a bit. The rear self propulsion works great. It's very powerful and very strong. In the beginning, it was kind of hesitating because it's been a while, obviously, since this thing has run. So the belt needs to kind of like go around the pulleys a little bit just to kind of rub off whatever debris or moisture might have been on it. But then it started to grip really well. But I'm a little confused as to why it uh, just stopped like that. You know what I mean? Uh, maybe there was a little water in there that eventually got into the carburetor and uh, created it to stall like that. See, I want to hear for a pop. Usually when it kind of pops and stuff like that, it's the uh, mixture of water and gas. It's not allowing it to combust properly. So, you know, it wants to keep going, but uh, I, I have a feeling that maybe it was there's some water in it. So uh, let's drop the bowl and see what's inside. My favorite Starbucks blend, holiday blend, only available in the, win uh, in the uh, holiday season. This has a uh, deflector too, which is useful, but honestly, I, I don't really use it because I, I like to uh, mulch my stuff so I don't let anything come out. Uh, if you look here, there's a little bit of rust over here, but if this is closed, you don't even see it. I'm gonna put it on the side, the side where the dipstick is, so that oil doesn't leak through the uh, carburetor as well as a muffler. So you can tilt it as long as it's on this side. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna loosen up that bowl on the bottom, the bowl nut, uh, with a uh, half inch wrench, and just drop the bowl and see what comes out. Got a half inch wrench, the round part.
So if the problem is just a little bit of water contamination, uh, this would be a super easy fix because we know the self-propulsion does work. It does run and start, but it uh, only runs for about a minute or two, and then it stalls and it won't restart again. So I'm looking at the uh, bowl. It's a l slightly dirty. We're gonna clean this up in a bit. Let's drop this bowl. There was nothing there. Maybe it wasn't getting gas, but it was getting gas before. Maybe it was uh, remnants of it. As you can see, the bowl is clean and it doesn't appear to have any water coming out. This gasket came off while I took it off. Uh, let's put this on its uh, back right side up again and see if fuel freely moves, uh, comes out. Let me get a uh, towel. Alright, I got a towel. I'm going to put it right side up now. See if fuel comes out. And it does. It's pouring out. See? Pouring out. So there's no problems with the fuel. So why was it empty? Why was the bowl empty when I uh, got it? You know? Uh, when I took the bowl off. So that's weird. Um... I'm going to blow this stuff out. I'm going to put it back on the side again. So that the fuel stops. I'm going to get that carb spray again. Just spray it. Just to clean it. I'm also going to blow some... Uh, fluid up the emulsion by bending the straw. Here's the uh, jet bowl. As you can see, you can see through it. It's clear. And there's a little tiny one right there. I want to make sure that's clear. I'm going to get a, uh, a needle. So you got this little tiny one here. Here's a bread, bread twisty tie that has uh, the plastic sheared on it. And you can see it goes in downwards. There's a, it's a diagonal drill. So it goes downwards and you can see that it's going through and that thing is clear. Also there's a hole here that you want to clear uh, and it was clear but I'm just showing you guys where the uh, orifices are. I mean that this is a good jet bowl nut you know nothing wrong with it. Uh, I don't see anything wrong with it. So we're going to put all this back and see what happens. You want to make sure the uh, float also is correct because with the Tecumsehs, it's not exactly parallel like that. It actually flops a little bit down like that, which it feels right. So this feels good. This um, gasket came off. And I know my hand's in the way, I'm sorry, but it's the only way I can get this on. That uh, pin holding the bowl, uh, the float, is coming out. Now it's good. That's clean. You want to put the dip of the bowl where the um, part that kind of goes down. It's the only carburetor bowl that's not one directional. It has to be perfect. See this part here where it goes down? It has to go where the depression of that bowl is. Otherwise, the bowl will have nowhere to go if you put it the other direction. You have to get that to fit on there. 
Okay, I got it fitted on there, I think. Hope I'm not pinching the gasket. The gasket is stuck on the bowl here, so it does have one. I'm just gonna put this nut back on. <laughs> You're a nut. Tighten it up. Uh, as you can see, there's that um, pilot jet screw right here. I'm gonna, since we're here, I'm going to uh, remove that pilot jet nut and uh, blow that out too, just to make sure that there's nothing in it. Um, I'm, I was also looking at the air filter and perhaps the air filter is clogged, which is why it might have stalled. I mean, it looks pretty clean, but there could be some blockage here that would uh, prevent it from, you know, staying, stay running, maybe. Let me get a screwdriver for that. Here's the pilot jet. As you can see, you can see through the hole, but then there's a little tiny hole there that you need to clear. And this twisty tie thing usually doesn't fit because it's too fat. See? It won't go through. So you have to get a wired bristle brush end to do it. Here's a wired bristle brush and one of the bristles. Choose a long one. And see that, even that doesn't go through. That could be the cause of some blockage if that doesn't go through. Ah, this one goes through, see? There we go. So that one worked. So I've cleaned that pretty well. I'm gonna clean this real quick. Just to blow whatever. Stick that in there. Uh, so with these carburetors, if you don't run them with the air filter on, it is a little unpredictable. So while I want to troubleshoot, and say that this air cleaner normally looks okay, right? I don't wanna run it without the filter because once you put the filter on, it'll run differently. So I'm gonna get a new filter and put it on here just for testing uh, and keep it on there if it makes a difference. I have a new filter here, it's the same exact one. They have cylindrical ones that aren't shaped exactly like this one, but this model has the one that's shaped like this. So this is a brand new filter courtesy of my friends over at HIPAA360.com. Go get your parts over there because that's where I get my parts and they have pretty much everything. <laughs> Provided it fits. There you go. So look, we have a new filter now. We just cleaned the carburetor, the pilot jet area as well. And the primer bulb is good. So let's put this back on its, uh, back horizontal again. Just to make sure again that I have gasage and that we have plenty of gasage. Uh, is it leaking? I worry about it leaking because, you know, when you first, when you take the bowl down and all that stuff uh, and put it back on again, sometimes you pinch the gasket or something like that or, and it's good. It's not leaking. So, you know what? Let's just uh, prime it. Hope that gas is uh, filling the bowl. There we go. I, I hear stuff. And we go. Yep, we've got fuel coming out of the straw. Let's start her up. Okay, here we go. There's more than you need to.
get a clamp so it runs it for a while. Gonna run it for a while. The uh, transmission runs great. Uh, really powerful, real salt propulsion. Very powerful. Uh, really, like no slippage whatsoever. Very responsive as well. hesitation, straight out, full throttle like that. <laughs> so everything seems to run just fine now. Um, uh, obviously I'm not going to be selling any uh, lawnmowers this time of season right now. So uh, I'm just going to hold on to this in my garage now because now it's fixed. And uh, just going to keep it here until it gets warmer. And then uh, when I start thinking about selling lawnmowers again. But uh, this one's ready to go. We'll uh, clean it up before we take pictures of it as spring nears. And uh, this was easy. Uh, I guess we had to clean the carburetor just a little bit. Something was blocking it, including the pilot jet area. But other than that, we just put gas in it. You know, it might have been a little bit of moisture in the bowl, but uh, as you can see, everything now works just great. Didn't really have to do much except for a car pool. Really good machine. I wish it wasn't a Tecumseh engine, but this one seems to run just fine. Uh, after you clean it up and wipe it down and everything, probably get about uh, 150 for it. Maybe 175 as, you know, you can see this is a big bagger. The bagger is much bigger than your regular Craftsman push mower bagger. Uh, very big. 21 inch rear self propelled, remember that. So uh, that's a good model, you know. Uh, front wheels are a little wobbly, you know what I'm saying? But honestly, they all, they all do that after a while, you know, and the tread is very good too, you know. But I'm not gonna change it and sell it as is. Remember, I'm a flipper, not a service guy. You know what I mean? I just get them running so that people can have a running machine, you know, uh, and do what they need to do. If they want to change the wheels, that's up to them. If they want to do an oil change, the oil's good. They can do it themselves. If they want to change a spark plug, and honestly, <laughs> is it ever the spark plug? One out of a hundred machines, it might be the spark plug, but very rarely do you have to change a spark plug, you know? Maybe clean it if it's filled with oil and stuff, but very rarely is it a spark plug. But anyway, that's my video for today. Craftsman 21 inch, real self-propelled, Tecumseh powered uh, Craftsman uh, self-propelled lawnmower. Uh, it's in good shape. All he did was do a little bit of a quick and dirty on the carburetor, added gas, changed the air filter. Nothing to it, man. Easy fix. Thanks a lot for joining me on today's episode. Thanks a lot for those guys who bought the stickers. Keep them coming. Keep the videos coming almost every day. See you guys next time on Mowers and Blowers. Hey Henry, see you guys next time on Mowers and Blowers. Hey, if you guys enjoyed the video, remember to give me a like.
Also, comment below. Subscribe. Remember, it doesn't cost anything to subscribe. It's free, right? Also, hit that little bell. That way you'll get post notifications whenever there's a new video and you won't miss out on any of them. Remember to follow my Instagram and Facebook, as well as if you'd like to donate a dollar or two, paypal.me slash mowers and blowers. Really appreciate all the support. Also, to keep the videos coming every day, support the channel. Bye.